Bro, we got 30 straight minutes of savage slash funniest stories of Bad Back Bird. All right, Larry Bird, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's one of the legends. If you didn't know, hey, bro, you're about to find out. Some of the stories that these legends and other people have about Larry Bird is insane. Like, you will never know. Looking at Larry Bird, you'll be like, hey, no way. This guy does look like a nice guy. No, that's a demon in disguise, bro. And we're going to check it out. Hope you guys enjoy. As always, we leave a like, comment, subscribe, join the fam, and yeah, let's get it. In the 1980s, Larry Bird and Kevin McHale were two of the most dominant players in the NBA, leading the Boston Celtics to three championships and establishing themselves Damn. as indelible legends of the game. But what many fans may not know is the complexity of their relationship both on and off the court. The legends were tight, but it still didn't stop Larry Legend from pranking his fellow Celtics star. I was so that's kind of see, like every every great star needs a sidekick, bro. I hate when people is like, oh, LeBron always need help. Every star need help. Michael Jordan had Scotty, Kobe had Shaq, like Tim Duncan had like what, uh, Tony Parker and Ginobili, and you know what I'm saying? Like every every superstar had a sidekick. You feel me? Like Jason Tatum and thing, just like Steph Curry and um. You know, Clay Thompson, like everyone has a second, you know. So, uh, getting ready to start a game and get up to the jump ball and, and, and Larry said, you know, just, just out of the blue, he goes, go ahead, Kevin, tell Elvin Hayes what you told me. And I didn't tell him anything. And I said, <laughs> no snitching. Go ahead and tell him, like, you said you were going to kick his ass. And I'm like, oh, man. And Elvin Hayes is looking at me. Well, at that point, it was hard to say, no, I didn't say anything. I said, oh, I guess so. But, you know, Larry just got stuff started up. <laughs> Larry is a funny guy. Charles Barkley is one of the most recognizable figures in the NBA. Not only was he a heck of a player, but he has also transitioned into one of the best analysts on TV, a position that is enhanced by his wealth of knowledge and his overall experience. That being said, there was a time when even Sir Charles was just a young man looking to make a name for himself. And That's crazy that they're going to break up that entire group of analysis, like the whole, like, Cause the whole like the new media contract so now it's going back to what what is it tnt um bro like damn <laughs> and back when he first got started chuck was easily starstruck unfortunately it was his youthful naivety that led him to be pranked we had my first all-star game and kareem sitting at the back <laughs> and bird and mikhail i said man i, I want to go meet kareem i never met him they said go back there and say hello to him <laughs> I walked back, and he's back there reading. And I said, hey, Mr. Jabbar. He looks up. I'm reading. Uh. <laughs> I said, OK. I turn around. Damn. Mikhail and Bird are laughing their ass they off. They knew it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, OK, OK, OK. <laughs> Y'all got me good. Yeah. In Spike Lee's 1986 film, She's Gotta Have It, Mars Blackman, a character played by Lee himself, refers to Larry Bird as the ugliest SOB in the NBA. This line caused some controversy. Nah, nah, that the disrespect. Son, SOB is crazy. Larry Bird as the ugliest SOB in the NBA. This line caused some controversy at the time, with some people accusing Lee of racism. Lee later defended the line, saying that it was simply a reflection of Mars's character, who is known for his blunt and often offensive remarks. Lee also said that he respected Bird's playing ability, even if he didn't find him attractive. He in 2022, to. Lee spoke on meeting Bird for the first time and the anxiety he had before meeting the legend. I tell a story about Larry Bird. My first film, my character, Mars Blackman, is having a discussion about basketball. The white boy's bad, you gotta give him credit. And my character said not a nice thing about Larry Bird. He's the ugliest motherfucker in me, that's what he is. For the Damn. first time, Capital One <laughs> commercials. It's a parrot. He's got a name, Larry. Bird. Hey, hey guys. Larry Legend. Hey, who's that? My bracket buddy, Charles Barkley. The first Larry Bird. I'm like, oh man, Larry. So I, I didn't think he had to like, you know, Barkley. I think we got, we got the joke. We got it. I was really nervous. <laughs> I made a point that when Larry comes to the set, I'm gonna go to his trailer. So I knocked on the trailer. It was just him alone. I said, Mr. Burke, I come in. I was nervous. And I said, Larry, I apologize for anything, you know, that you might have taken offense to. He said, Spike, man, forget about that, man. And we can dapped up. Nah, don't I, trust I that. Hell no. Because I was nervous. Terrell Brandon <laughs> played for three teams during his 11-year career in the NBA. He's a two-time All-Star and was a key starter on three. All I got to say, 
Spike Lee better be he just he lucky he's not an NBA player because if he was to go against Larry Bird, Larry Bird was would end his career. All right, I'm just saying. <laughs> the NBA franchises before a series of injuries ultimately forced him to play his last game at 31 years old. Brandon was selected 11th overall in the 1991 NBA draft by the Cleveland Cavaliers. After a strong rookie season, Brandon was named to the NBA All Rookie Team. He spent his first nice. three and a half seasons as the backup to All Star point guard and Cavs legend Mark Price. In 2021, he recalled how badass Larry Bird was on the court, even at the end of his legendary career. Bird is a psychologically assassin. In what way, nice. though? We was up one. He said, who's guarding me? As we come out of timeout, I says, Craig Elo. He said, why you got that white boy on me? <laughs> <laughs> Don't put no white boy on me. He said, I'm going to go over here, Crazy and I'm going to get in the said. corner. Then Johnson going to pass it to me, and I'm going to hit for the last second shot and it's man. over. I told Joe Wood, I said, hey man, listen, the ball is going to Larry Bird. Everybody knows the ball's going to Larry right. Bird. Do whatever you can. Craig, Gerald, just cover him. He hit the shot on him, jumping on right. He was getting them off of him like this. He walked off and said, legend. <laughs> <laughs> bro, Larry like, Bird, keep man. me predicting the future, Larry bro. Bird was a highly <laughs> anticipated rookie when he joined the Boston Celtics in 1979. He had been a star at Indiana State, and he was expected to be a major contributor right away. However, Bird's arrival was not without its challenges. He was a white player in a league that was predominantly black, and he was often stereotyped as being soft or not tough enough. Mm. One of the people who was skeptical of Bird was Cedric Maxwell, a veteran forward who was already a key member of the Celtics. Maxwell had a reputation for being a tough player, and he was not afraid to speak his mind. In one of their first practices together, Maxwell quickly learned this bird guy is something special. Got I walk in the first day of camp, them guys were on the floor stretching, and here comes the white savior, here comes this, here comes that. <laughs> I think that you would say that most black Ooh. players at the time were racist in, in the sense that we did not think that you could find a, a white guy who could play better than any black guy. I sort of enjoyed it because I knew I was going to battle him all day. I'm thinking, oh, he's slow, he can't get off a shot. He's That's not what you that think. strong. This is going to be a layup. The Curtis and Sydney didn't last long. They didn't make it through the first practice. And they were cut. Bam. Larry Bird kind of reminds me of like Luca. It does. It's not nothing flashy. It's nothing like more athleticism like thing they can do on a court or anything. They just get the job done. <laughs> it might look ugly as shit. It might look boring as shit, but they're getting the job done. I mean, that's that's how I look at it. Knocks down the jump shot. If they need to score 30 a game, they're going to do it. It's not going to look pretty. It's not going to look the best way, the fanciest way, but it's going to get done. Maybe that was luck. Gets the ball again. Bam. Knocks down another jump shot. What? Now I'm thinking like, okay, hey, you know what? I'm going to D this guy up. I'm going to show him what it's like. 20 feet away. Bam. 25 feet away. Bam. Mm. I, my mind just goes so good. Damn, this white guy can play. James Worthy was a key member of the Showtime Lakers, one of the most dominant teams in NBA history. He was a versatile player who could score, rebound, and defend at a high level. He was also a clutch performer in the playoffs, and he helped the Lakers win three NBA championships. Worthy's battles with Larry Bird were some of the most exciting games of the 1980s. They were two of the best players Damn. in the league, and they always brought their best when they faced each other. Mm. But after all these years, Worthy apparently still hates Larry Legend. Larry could just flat out score and give you numbers and, no, put, and be talking shit. There were times I had different. to guard him. You know the play is coming, but he would tell you it's coming. He says, <laughs> if you trail, I'm going to trail into the lane and to a little floater. And he said, if you fucking pop, he said, if you try to get over the top, he said, I'm going to pop to that corner and bust a jumper in your fucking face. I'm like, mm. fuck you. I'm, I'm all up on it. <laughs> you know, I got his shirt tail. I'm holding it. You know, I'm like, you. You, know, you know where I'm from. I'm from like, Gaston. That is, like, like, talking, you know. Man, handle sure it, enough, does. Man. The ball comes in. <laughs> DJ takes a couple of dribbles. I'm quick. I'm quick enough. I think I can get over the top. I, I, I get over the top. I get out there, but 
he pops to the corner and I'm running. He kind of told wait, you, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's it's the mind game, bro. It's the mind game. He wants you to do what he's telling you. It's the mind game. Asshole. Craig Elo was a professional basketball player who played in the NBA for 14 seasons. Elo is perhaps best remembered for his role in one of the most famous plays in NBA history as Michael Jordan hit a game-winning jumper over him in what is known as the shot. Elo oh played God. for the Cavaliers for seven seasons, and he too suffered quite a bit from the trash talk and the brilliance of Larry Bird. There was one game in, in Cleveland where he was having a pretty rough first half, and in the old days in Cleveland, you walked off the court at, uh, the same way at halftime, and I kind of puffed up on him and walked beside him and was like, yeah, you're one for ten. I was like, that's <laughs> defense, you know? And he just kind of looked at me and said, there's two halves. And he came back out and hit about 10 in a row on me. And the last one was left-handed. And he asked me if my mother was watching because <laughs> uh, he wanted to embarrass me. So, <laughs> yeah, so he was... While Larry nah, scoring 10 in a row, then asking your opponent if their mom is watching is insane. Nah, I would not, nah, not nah. at this point. This is beyond basketball, bro. I would have to like throw hands, bro. Like at this point, kick me out the game, bro. I'm getting flagrant two suspension, bro. We throwing hands. It's no way we going that route. Larry <laughs> Bird always tried to keep a low that profile. Sweet. He was just too much to overcome. Playing in Boston on some excellent Celtics teams, he was always in the spotlight. His three MVP awards and three championships, along with his trash talking ability didn't help keep him out of people's mind, especially when he was playing against their favorite team. In his Hall of Fame speech, the legend shared a funny but true story on the time he got death threats from the opposite team's fans, mid-game. Game five of the championship series, we was out there. We were down by two or three points at halftime, and Casey come walking out, and he called me over. He said, Larry, he said, I hate to tell you this. He said, there's been a death threat on your life. You gotta make a decision whether you wanna finish the game, or go back and sit in the locker room, wait till we get done, or leave the arena. And oh, I hell. I'm gonna play. So Casey just turns and walks away. I go right through the left. Bro, line basketball is never that serious. Some Casey pointing at me. I walk over to Casey. I said, "Now what?" He goes, "Well, the horn's getting ready to blow here, Larry." He said, "Whatever you do, don't come to the huddle." He said, "Could you please stand out here?" <laughs> he said, "Could." Could you please stand out here at center court? He said, you never know. Just just in case, can you please go over there? There's a threat on your life. You don't care, but I do care about mine. So, yeah, you go over there. You stay over there. Yeah. <laughs> the guy might be a bad shot. For real. So just in the horn blows, I walk over to KC. He's drawing on the play. I put my arm around him. He looks up, puts his head down, squats down a little bit so the guys are surrounding him. He goes, thanks a lot. Bird was part of the Pacers' front office from 1997 until 2022 when he stepped down from an active role. During his time there, Pacers players must have been in awe when he was around. In 2022, Lance Stevenson, who played for the Pacers for seven seasons, has added another story to the great Larry Bird legend. Wait, he doesn't play basketball still, do he? I haven't seen him in like two years, like two seasons. Ever since he blew in LeBron air, he, he just became like irrelevant. <laughs> By Lance, during an Indiana Pacers practice, 60-year-old Larry Bird decided to show off his shooting stroke right in front of his young players. So we, uh, we, we stretching, right? So the whole team is just stretching. And Larry just walks, in the, walks on the court, like, grabbed the ball and started jacking threes, like... Damn. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> like, I'm like... I'm looking at everybody. I'm like, do y'all see this right now? And he's made, he made like at least 10 in a row threes. Like just walked in, came in, looked at us and was like, Insane. looking at us stretch and hit like 10 threes in a row and walked off and, and sat like he ain't do nothing. Like it was regular and fold his legs and just sitting there looking at us. I'm like, yo, this guy is nice. <laughs> he's like, no, let me just show, show these young buck how it's done, bro. Like imagine if Larry Bird had like, the three-point line coming up like throughout his whole career like bro he'll probably be the best three-point shooter in history i don't know like him and steph curry would probably be neck and neck right now if he came up with the three-point line <laughs> that's larry legend right there <laughs>
I'm like, man, that's a legend right there. <laughs> Apart from being an elite scorer, Larry Larry Legend was also known for his superb trash talking skills. Bird was so gifted that he would often tell his defenders exactly how he planned on scoring and would end up pulling that exact same move. The brutal confidence he had when playing in the NBA at the highest level was absolutely staggering, and these stories epitomizes that perfectly. Larry Bird would put fear in me and everyone else. The dude couldn't jump, wasn't fast, wasn't athletic. Dude That's just what I'm saying. Fight. So Larry got in the game one time, and for some reason Chuck Daly puts me in. And Larry looks around and goes, uh... What's up, Sal? I said, no. Nah. He goes, you on me? I said, yeah, I got size on you right now. I've been watching that movie. He goes, y'all not double teaming? And he's looking around. He goes, yo. I go, nah, it's just me, fella. He goes, mouse in the house. The dude would just tell you where he's going, shoot it in your face, talk shit to you, and run back down the floor. Right, he catches the ball. Nothing he over at our like bench and goes, I'm going to take two dribbles right, cross over left. And he catches the ball. He does this. And he shoots it. He says, Sal, you better ask for a double team, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he takes his two dribbles, cross over, pull up jump shot. Wow. And looks over at our bench, and we're all looking at each other like, is he for real? <laughs> he was the biggest trash talker back in the day, but he would back it up. Back bro, they don't make them like how they used to, bro. Larry Bird was once, yeah, he, yeah, he does a different breed, bro. That he's able to back different. it up made it that much special. Around the NBA, everyone has their first moment in the league they still remember. Whether it's a trash talk exchange or getting owned by a more experienced player, those memories stay with you forever. But things might get even worse when that vet player who's welcoming you is the trash talking goat himself, Larry Bird. With the number of players he trash talked and took to school, if the NBA ever introduces a trash talking award, it should be named after Larry Bird. The guy was just fearless when it comes to mind games as rookie Eddie Johnson found out the hard way. Larry Bird basically taught me how to trash talk. It was my second game of my career and I'm scared to death already. And he walks out and he just stands next to me and he <laughs> leans over and he looks at me. And I didn't really pay him any attention. He said, do you honestly think you're gonna guard me? <laughs> then he stands up and he looks over at our bench and he looks at Cotton. You all think this rookie gonna guard me? Man, I'ma bust you up. Just right in my ear. And finally, he walks around right stands in front, in front of me. Let me tell you something right now. I'm gonna wear your ass out. Game hey, starts, and he's just wearing me out. And he came down, he said, I Pause. bet you can't do this. And he raises up from Steph Curry range. And he shoots an air ball. And I look at him, he like, that don't matter. It's the fact that I can do it. <laughs> stay in the game. I bet you can't. <laughs> in 1992, the best oh players God. from various colleges were called bro, in. Bro, imagine just missing a shot and still talking your shit like nothing happened. Like, bro, at least I can stay in the game. Bet you you can't. Go shoot at your ball. I bet you get benched for the rest of the game. Shit, you're not on my level, bro. <laughs> face the dream team for their first scrimmage. Future All-Stars. Chris Webber, Penny Hardaway, Allen Houston, Grant Hill and Jamal Mashburn were part of the team dubbed the College All-Stars. According to Mashburn, he, along with his fellow select teammates, given first-hand experience of Larry Bird's trash-talking the very first time they met Larry Legend. Larry Bird, you don't realize how big Larry Bird is until you stand yeah, up close yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah. He walked by us and he says, y'all those college guys? And he looked at us and he said, Get some fucking rest. It's going to be a long week. And, walk off. and we get back to the hotel and Ronnie Rogers said, hey, Larry, you ain't hit a jumper since 84. We ain't think none of it. The next day we came in and I never seen this. And this one I was like, this is a different breed. Larry Bird <laughs> got the ball on Rodney Rogers. And every time he was about to make a move, he told him what he was going to do. One dribble pull up going left off glass. <laughs> One dribble going right, spin, shot, bucket. He scored nine times or eight times in a row. God and damn. Said, Young fella, look like 84, huh? <laughs> Last time he made it. <laughs> yeah. mm. The playoffs are where superstars shine. Adrenaline and pure talent will take over. If you believe you can't be stopped, usually you can't. However, sometimes when your game goes to a new level, this challenge inspires your competitor to wrestle the spotlight away from you. This happened in Game 7 of the 1988 Eastern Conference semifinals, and the stars were Larry Bird and Dominique Wilkins. 
The human highlight reel and Larry Legend couldn't be any more polar opposite in their playing styles. Bird was pure finesse and poetry in motion. Wilkins was more shock and awe. Boston won the first two contests. Ooh. Then the upstart that Hawks took back. the next was more on. shock and awe. Boston won the first two contests. Then the upstart Hawks took the next three. However, Boston was not going to throw in the towel as they were able to salvage their season with a Game 6 win in Atlanta. Game 7 ended up being a gunfight, a duel, and battle of two wills. Here's the crucial moments of Game 7, told by Wilkins. We knew going to Game 6, I said, man, we could, we could advance and we can beat these guys. And we blew our opportunity. After the game, Barrett made a prediction. He said, Atlanta blew their opportunity. I'm guaranteeing a win in Boston. Our shots are going to be dropping a little bit better, and we're going to be running a little bit faster. So I'd say Sunday's going to be a big win for the Celtics. We get to Boston. Mm. Yeah, so whoever guarded me tonight going to have a long night. Unfortunately, Bird was saying the same thing in the other locker room to, to his teammates. He only had 12 points going to the fourth quarter. Kevin Willis, yeah. me, and Larry, we were running down the court, and Kevin reached for me, put his hands, and Bird said, don't let this so-and-so score in one night. I'm like, what you doing? Do you don't wake up. Don't let this what? Say it. Don't say so-and-so. No, say it with your chest. What did he say exactly? I want to know what he said exactly. I don't want to hear so-and-so. I want to hear... Every single adjective that he, I want to hear what he said. <laughs> don't let this so and so score in one night. I'm like, what you doing? Do you don't wake up a sleeping giant. <laughs> and his eyes got that big. Damn. Got... It's Bird's turn. Bird snaps free. Comes up with a shot. And the Celtics lead it. It's Bird. It was a shootout in the fourth quarter. It came down to the last shot. Well, woke up a beast. In the 1980s, Wilkins and Bird, two of the greatest players in NBA history, engaged in an exciting rivalry. The two players, who played in different ways, were mm. equally dominant on the court and contributed to numerous memorable plays and deep playoff runs by their respective teams. But despite their strong battles on the court and early difficulties, Wilkins and Bird respected one another as rivals. This wasn't the case early in Wilkins's NBA career. Rookie Wilkins had to earn the respect of Larry Legend. By Wilkins, Bird didn't even want to shake hands with him, and that's what will remind him of their first meeting. I mean, we're in the Boston Garden. I'm in awe because this is a stick of the Boston I think Garden. I've heard this story from and a past reaction. First, I mean, we was at the jump circle, and I go shake Larry Bird's hand. He put both hands behind his back, you know, like, I'm like, you know what, maybe he's just getting into the game. You know, I, <laughs> I'm trying to get the benefit down the first play of the game. I'm gone. He said, I don't know where they got you guarding me, Holmes. And he shoots <laughs> a three. And I wasn't Damn. mad he made the three. I thought, this son of a bitch just called me Holmes. <laughs> oh, man, I was so mad. So I'm coming down the left side, and I go up in a fast break, and he comes out, and I'm pumping it behind my head, and he jumped. And they find Wilkins. Look out. I said, I got him. Boom. <laughs> he's sitting down on the ground. I'm pointing. Like, nah, he that. Uh-uh. Nah. Larry Bird, what? Nah, he just demolished. Why would you jump? Wilkins, look out. I said, I got him. Boom. <laughs> he's sitting oh down on the God. ground. I'm pointing like this. He said, hey, Rook. I'm like, what? He said, I like you. You got balls. That had to be the well, dunk of the year. i 40 on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Larry Bird and Magic Johnson started the golden era of the NBA during the 1980s. It continued in the 1990s as a myriad of basketball legends graced the hardwood each leaving an indelible mark on the sport. Bird was the catalyst for countless tales shared by NBA legends of that era. From Magic Johnson's fierce rivalry to Michael Jordan's admiration, every basketball great from that time seems to have a Larry Bird story, a testament mm. to his unique skill, determination, and enduring impact on the game they all loved. Here's another 90s legend telling a Larry Bird story. The great Utah Jazz power forward, Carl Malone. I remember sitting on the bench watching Kevin McHale and Larry Bird. And Larry Bird did something. To me, I'm still marveled at this. And he got so many people. It was a timeout. And one right. of our teammates, Bart Kofold, had a camera. Right. He's taking pictures. So Larry Bird came over there and looked at our bench. And he said, uh, three-pointer from right over here. <laughs> so I'm sitting over there looking like, that Babe Ruth, <laughs> calling your Babe shot Ruth. Plane, right? Yeah. So Isaiah, I'm sitting there looking. He looked down at the floor. Hell, everybody looked down at the floor. He like, like he threw something. And he hit a three. Mm. Can you believe that? 
And I remember Kevin kind of looking over at the bench like, this is going to be a long night. There's no question Bill Walton played a significant role in helping the 1985-86 Boston Celtics win a championship. In his first year with the team, Walton came off the bench to spell both Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish. The oft-injured Walton, who missed three full NBA seasons because of injury, played 80 Damn. games that season and was named the NBA's sixth man of the year. In 2020, Walton... Wait, said before the injury or after the injury? The oft-injured Walton, who missed three full NBA seasons because of injury, played 80 games that season and was named the Damn. NBA's sixth man of the year. Only missed In 2020, two games? Walton shared a great story on how Bird took over a game that was seemed to be over already in the start of the third quarter. Nobody wants to ever take the ball out of bounds because they know they're never going to get it back. Larry Bird always took the ball out of bounds. He's going to take the ball out of bounds, and that referee comes, and the referee hands the ball to Larry to start the third. We're down 25. Larry takes the ball and pushes it back into the midsection of the referee so that he can't get away, and the referee is like startled, staggered. What's going on here? We're all right there, right in front of the Celtic bench. And Larry looks right into the soul, right through the eyes of that referee, and he says to him, we're not going to quit. You make sure you don't quit either. The guy just like melted on the spot. Uh -huh. Larry hit 11 straight shots to start the third, including seven threes. We were tied at the end of the third. We Bro, every story is has to do with Larry Bird hitting like consecutive amount of shots. It's always like, it's like from one to 10. It's never like, you know what I'm saying? It's he's always hitting consecutive shots. It looks like he gets on hot streaks, it seems like. In overtime, we did not need a plane to get home that night. Larry Bird. Like he's one of those players. In 1986, the great Larry Bird won the NBA's first three-point contest. Everybody knows about his famous flex. When walked into the locker room and asked his peers, who's coming in second? But after claiming victory and reuniting with his teammates, the sharpshooter was on a mission. If you bet against him, you were going to pay the price. Literally. Damn. As the story goes, some members of the Boston squad apparently doubted his chances. Not only did that skepticism push the forward to enter the contest, but it gave him the perfect opportunity to flex his metaphorical muscles after his win. So when the Celtics checked in an hotel to resume the regular season, Bird patrolled the lobby with a mini golf pencil and small notepad, collecting cash from teammates who made the mistake of betting Damn. against him in the three-point <laughs> contest, and no one was allowed to postpone payment. In his exact words, if you don't have your money, I'll wait right here while you go back to your room and get it, Bird told teammates. I'm the three-point king. Mm, talk, hey. In the 1986 NBA Finals, like. it was the first time Hakeem... Get a move like an extortion, bro. You gotta, hey, I need my money ASAP. Go up and get it. You're not leaving. <laughs> yeah, like, the dream. Bro, this is why I respect Bird so much, bro. Like, he's such a real one. Despite how he, bro, he's such a real one. Bro. had played on the biggest basketball stage. Before game one, he was asked about facing the storied Boston Celtics franchise. The 23-year-old from Lagos, Nigeria, said he knew nothing about the Celtics' history. I know nothing of this tradition. I am not from around here, he said. When Larry Bird heard what Hakeem said, Larry Legend offered to educate him about the 15 banners that hung from the Damn. Boston Garden rafters. We'd like to give him a two-week history lesson, Bird savagely replied. The legend went on to record two triple-doubles in the series, in including a takeover performance in game six. Larry got every rebound. Larry made every steal. He made every pass. He just literally did everything. The Celtics closed out the Rockets in that sixth game and Bird won finals MVP after averaging 24 points, 9.7 rebounds, and 9.5 assists for the Damn. series. Larry Bird, the greatest player I ever played with by far. When it comes to modern NBA trash talkers, Gary Payton sits near the top of the list. The glove was a relentless defender, and verbal warfare was part of his arsenal. In retirement, though, he's able to see things from a more removed perspective and dish out a few compliments. When Peyton was asked about Larry Legend's trash talk, not only did he confirm that Bird could talk a big game, but the former guard also admitted that he could back it up. He'll give it to you any way he wanted to. Any hey, way he wanted to. Larry Bird was called. Playing at the guard, man, on his last leg. Bird used to tell me, look here, man. I'm going to shoot this motherfucker jump in your face right there in that cone. I can shoot a jumper anywhere I want to. He said, I'm going to make sure I tell you where I'm going to shoot the ball at. Wrap it up and bust your head open. Mm. All that shit. And I said, shit, 
watch this. And I'm d him up, and he slow-balled me. And he said, young fella, what did I tell you I was going to do? And he turned around, raised up. Did around, exactly that. All draw. <laughs> He's the coldest dude I ever seen with that shit, man. And I said, shit, I ain't going to mess with you no more. <laughs> man, everybody talking about these great greats. They don't be always mentioning him. He was the shit. I'm saying he is one of them. If you played professional basketball between 1979 and 1992, being asked to defend Larry Bird was the sporting equivalent of drawing the short straw. Even if you knew what the Boston Celtics star was going to do, stopping Damn. him was another story. Dominique Wilkins experienced that reality firsthand. Not only did he have to try and slow down the prolific scorer, but he was on the receiving end of some trash talk along the way. And while both men have long since retired, that verbal warfare is still going on. On January 26, 2023, Pacers president of basketball operations Kevin Pritchard took to Twitter to share some texts that he had received from Bird. The former forward, who spent time in Indianapolis as both a coach and an executive, had snapped a picture of a photo of him shooting a jumper over Wilkins. It wasn't enough to just send a picture, though. Larry Legend had to talk a bit of trash, writing, <laughs> Can you please tell your boy to put a hand up? I think that is the pose for the statue. Oh my God, bro. Once that screenshot hit social media, it made its way to Wilkins. The former Atlanta Hawks simply responded, Man, the disrespect, with four crying laughing emojis. Based on his reaction, it's fair to say that Dominique Wilkins hasn't taken Bird's jab personally. At this point, he probably That's knows good, what it's, it's like sports, dealing with man. Larry Legend. When Reggie Miller was a rookie, he did his best to psych out the great Larry Bird and failed miserably. Luckily, this didn't stop Miller from having a storied NBA career. He was even fortunate enough to play for Bird from 1997 to 2000. When Miller entered the league in 1987, Bird and the Boston Celtics were already legendary. They had won three NBA championships in the Damn. 1980s, and Bird was the MVP three years running. Miller didn't seem to care about any of that. In a snippet from his book, I Love Being the Enemy, Reggie recounts his story of razzing the legend. A close game between the Celtics and Pacers was coming down to free throws. With only 20 seconds left, Bird was fouled and sent to the free throw line. To distract him from making the shot, Miller tried trash talking. Bird, irritated by the Miller whispers, turned his head to look at Miller. You got to be kidding me, Rook. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> Bird hit the first Brooke. free throw and continued on his rant. Rook, I'm the best shooter in the league right now. In the league. Understand? And you're up here trying to say something? After he easily Damn. hit the next shot, Miller said he felt like an idiot trying to get under the skin of the great Larry Bird, especially in front of Bird's teammates who found the whole scene hilarious. Even after his retirement, Bird was a terrific shooter. And many years after hanging the boots, the legendary small forward still knocked shots, surprising former and current players. During his time as the president of basketball operations for the Indiana Pacers, Bird once shocked Paul George and the rest of the team when he made 15 straight shots while wearing a suit. During a Q&A session with Slam, George recalled how impressive Bird was. By George, Bird picked a ball up that had rolled over. He rolled up his sleeves and made about 15 in a row and just Damn. walked out like nothing just happened. PG also told it was the craziest thing he's ever seen and that him and his Pacers teammates were speechless and they didn't know whether to keep shooting or just to end practice. In 2023, George again talked on the Celtics legend. This time he told a different story while doing a podcast P episode. We had a tight relationship. He's in front office though when you were there, right? Yeah, he was yeah, in front so office. Crazy Larry story. It was after practice, right? And we were shooting around and he's walking out. To this point, I've never seen him play. Like I've never seen him shoot. I always had this vision of him from, you know, YouTube videos and old clips like that. We're shooting and he's like walking out of the gym about to leave, but the ball rolls over to him. So he picks Damn. the ball up, bro. Shoots that motherfucker. Cash from three and he's in slacks button down right. he got his loafers on he could have that up and airballed <laughs> and then i would have just had this whole d different like mindset about who he was right. like it was not like that yeah did he say anything to you after he no, bro, <laughs> cashed that motherfucker, bro and just walked out like didn't say shit just walk. I wish it had like a little clip of that they can like show us. Out I'll, of the gym. I, I would just like to see how we shoot the ball at this age now. Hell. I am who I am. I'm the bird, <laughs> mother. For a guy who's always at a disadvantage due to his lack of athleticism, Larry Bird was one confident dude. He would often seek out the toughest defenders, who are almost always the most athletically gifted players in the NBA. 
As Charles Barkley told numerous times, Bird used to call out coaches and players for assigning a white player to guard him mid-game. Mm. But Bird didn't talk trash to you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bird talked trash to everybody. I remember him. He was cursing under his breath. And I asked him, I said, Larry, what's going on with you? He says, you guys are being disrespectful to me. And I says, what are you talking about? He says, you guys are putting a white guy on me. <laughs> Crazy <laughs> statement. Wait, who's the white guy I, you put I, on I, him? I can't remember who it was. I just started laughing. I had no comeback. He said, That's a crazy he says, statement. It's disrespectful when y'all put a white guy on me. And I'm sitting there like, I'm laughing in the middle of a game. And there's only two guys <laughs> said that to me. Him and Michael. Larry and Michael are the only two guys. And you, and you gotta laugh. You don't put a white guy on me. That's just fucking disrespectful. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. Tell us in the comments, what is your favorite Larry Bird's trash talk? And if you... Yo, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy. You know what? Always, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, join the fam, and I'll see you for the next one.